Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to St. Stephen's Rogersville. Special salute to those who are joining us online. We're so glad that you can be with us today. I'm just glad that anybody came in from the sunshine and is here in worship and is not out golfing or something like that. So yay, we're together. And we'll have announcements in a little bit, but let's get started with our opening hymn number 718 in your blue hymn books or up here on the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie eleison. Lord have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ have mercy. Kyrie eleison.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning is from um, the Gospel of Luke in, in the 24th chapter, beginning with verse 36. Please stand. <clears throat> While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he, said that, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe, believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are my wit our witnesses of these things. Here ends the gospel. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Do we have any children that would be willing to talk to me and to come up for children's sermon? I know Trace is getting kind of old. Did I get your name right? Hi, Gwen. No trace? All right, you shout out the answer if you know it, okay? You guys sit by me. I love those boots. I've been coveting those boots for a long time. I know, they're very gorgeous. Very gorgeous. So I'm just curious. Do you believe in ghosts? You don't believe in ghosts? How about you, Trace? Yeah. Yeah. You believe in them. Okay. Tell me, what, what does a ghost look like? White. White? How about you, Trace? What do you think a ghost looks like? Uh, I'm going to say hazy. Hazy. Okay. What do ghosts sound like? Don't know, because you don't believe in them. You haven't seen one, have you? <laughs> At Halloween, what do you think ghosts sound like? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> she would make a very good ghost. Yeah. How do ghosts act? Are they kind? Yeah. No? Yeah. What did you do? Ghosts stomp around? Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. So Miss Peggy just shared a reading out of the Bible. And the disciples, that is, Jesus' bestest friends, thought Jesus was a ghost. What? Do you think Jesus was a ghost? No, no, he wasn't. But it was very, very confusing because they saw him die. 
and then he rose from the dead. And there's a real fancy church word for that. It's called resurrection. Can you say that with me? Resurrection. Can you say it by yourself? Very good. I am so impressed. And that's why they thought he was a ghost, because he died, and then he came back to life again. He was resurrected. So Jesus came back to life, and he hung out with those disciples for a little bit, and they talked, and they learned, and then Jesus said, I got to go to heaven to be with my father, but I am going to give you the power to continue my work here on earth. And do you know those disciples did that? They took what Jesus taught them and spread it all over the globe, all over the earth. I don't think a ghost would do that. But those disciples went out and shared the story. And now that's what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to take what we learn in church, take what we learn in Sunday school or Bible study, and share that with everybody else. Because it's such happy news. That death doesn't mean it's the end. We will be resurrected with Jesus. So I want to thank you for being so brave and coming up here today. You can go back to your seats. That's the same Sunday school story we're doing today. Get out of here. Uh-oh, I hope I didn't steal your thunder. No, I'm making it much harder for me. <laughs> I'll see you in Zion soon. for you, too. <laughs> Hang on. Something is dangling off my body under this robe. We are very good at death. Yeah, you heard me right. We are very good at death. Now, we may not like it. We might pray that it not happen. But still, we have to deal with it all the time, and therefore we've become good at it. We see daily shootings in the news. And of course, there are things like car accidents, wars, floods, fires. We hear about cancer and COVID and all sorts of other diseases that have brought death into our lives. We see death happening. We know it intimately in our own families. We talk about it frequently. But life? Life? Well, that's a whole different story. Here we are in the third Sunday of Easter. Third Sunday. And our scriptures for the past three weeks have all been resurrection reports. It seems like nobody can grasp this resurrection life thing. In every single report of the resurrection, we hear the people experienced fear, terror, and shock. Everybody experienced that in those stories. And the truly amazing thing about today's reading is that this is Jesus' second appearance to those disciples. He's already appeared to them once before. He's already, since his death, resurrected, appeared to them once, and they're still shocked as can be today. The disciples think Jesus is a ghost. What does it take to believe in resurrection life? Well, Jesus, once again, very patiently, 
showed them his body, invited them to touch him and prove that he was real skin and bones and wounds. Jesus even asked for something to eat to prove he wasn't a ghost because ghosts don't eat. No one seemed to be able to comprehend that there could be life happening right before their eyes, right in the midst of death. So you see, it wasn't death that frightened them. No, what shocked them was life and the possibility of life. Just like us, the disciples were no longer surprised when death happened. They had seen it. They knew what to do, what was expected, how to behave. What they couldn't handle was life. They no longer knew what to do, what was expected, or how to behave. It was the not knowing that terrified them. You know, death, whether it comes quietly after a long, well-lived life, or suddenly in a blaze of bullets, or agonizingly with a knee to the neck, or slowly wasting away in a care facility. These things no longer shock us. Yes, we will grieve, but no, they do not shock. What shocks, alarms, terrifies, amazes, and makes us afraid and speechless is life. And especially the kind of life that Jesus offers us in the resurrection. See, our coming to Christ changes everything. We, if we live in a world as people who have been connected to Christ or who have been with Christ or touched by Christ, then the risen life of Christ is no mere abstract idea but a concrete reality. Such a life is surprising, terrifying, alarming, because spirit-filled lives are unpredictable, risky, and they totally reverse the ways of our world. Such a spirit-filled life reminds us that life emerges from <coughs> death, joy, can be found in sorrow. And a life given away for others is a life given back. See, in that reversal of resurrection life, we discover the divine hidden in things that the world counts as useless and negative. No wonder those disciples hid in fear. Something told them that following the risen Jesus would change every aspect of their lives forever. And let's face it, life is a whole lot more easy when we know exactly what to do, what is expected of us, and how to behave. But a life lived, empowered, and emboldened by the spirit of the risen Christ is unpredictable and risky. For that life is no longer our life, but Christ's who lives in us. Having found the tomb empty, heard the message of the angel, seen Jesus walk through